All right. <laughs> I know, man. I'm going to take some hits for this one. So just get ready. This is a rant. This is going to be a whole rant. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually getting sick of this. So this is sent to me. It's Average Man Unplugged talking about men paying for the first date and how much a man has to have, you know, to date them. You know, I don't care if she's a single woman that's cute or middle-aged woman with seven kids by seven different men to qualify for them. And so they say is you got to have at least a hundred K uh, just to start. Then you have to be six feet tall with six packs, six inches, all, all this kind of stuff, right? All these high ass qualifications with that was, that is assertedly out of the norm, way out of the norm. And they expect men to climb all over themselves, kill themselves, work three jobs to qualify for what? Mediocre punani. Mediocre punani, which is, you know, shout out to Tommy Sotomayor, right? What, what does Sim stand for? Sirs idolizing mediocre punani. That's what a simp is. Idolizing mediocre punani, which is what it is. 70% of women are average. Four, five, and six. Average, 70%. Average. Most women, the average woman earns what? $40,000 a year. The average woman doesn't even have a college degree. The average woman doesn't have a college degree. The average woman grew up poor and middle class. The average black woman, I should say. The average black woman has, you know, at least one child. The average black woman is a single mother. If you take all the averages, the average black woman is not worse 100 k But I'm not going to knock their hustle. If they say that is their price tag, six feet tall, six inches, six pack, and, on, and we've done the percentages. We've done the percentages. And six figures, we've done the percentages. If they say that's their price tag, that's their price tag. And what did I say? I'm going to make it real clear here. Drop that beat. Leave the car on the lot. What happens to overpriced cars that are not worth it? Leave the car on the lot. Even new cars. How many people can actually earn a 50000 Oh, earn or actually pay for a $50,000 car? That's average. Leave the car on the lot. There's a lot of overpriced goods. They have to sit on shelves and get reduced after two or three years because it, it's not moving because the price doesn't represent the value. A lot of your Nikes, a lot of your bags and stuff like that that they have sat on store shelves, stuff like that. How do you think they wind up at these so-called retailers? These Not the secondhand stores, but the outlet malls. They strip the insignias off of them and they put the bag up or put the shoe up at outlet malls. Why? Because they've been on the shelves for too long. And at the price they were charging initially, people weren't going to buy it or didn't couldn't afford it. Most guys do not meet those criteria. And most of the guys that can meet those criteria already have more than enough women in their lives. And they're not going to support you in the lifestyle that you think you deserve. Those women are rare. They're supposed to be rare. But the thing is, they bring value to that man. Whether she's an eight, nine, or ten, and trust and believe, an eight is one in a hundred. A nine is one in a thousand. A ten is one in ten thousand. If you are one of those women and you qualify as an eight, nine, or ten, then maybe you can get those 10% guys and get the six pack, six figures that you want. Maybe. And if you can, I'm not knocking your hustle. But guess what? I'm telling guys, 
don't even entertain what they're talking about. If that is their price tag, they've held their price tag out on the shelf, out on their window, their sticker, leave it on the lot, leave the car on the lot. Walk around to kick the tires. And they said, you can't even date me unless you make this much. Leave the car on the lot, walk away. And when you go to a car show, you walk around, beautiful car, maybe. And everything's good till you walk over to the sticker. And the sticker is way more than you can afford. What are you going to do? Cry about it? No. Leave it on a lot. Leave it where it sits. Not even entertain how I could get it. Don't care. It's not worth it. At the end of the day, guess what? Cars were going back and forth to work going back forth to wherever you're going to come from and a lot of times a $20,000 car or $15,000 car to get you back and forth without stopping on you without breaking down is just as important as the $100,000 car that looks good they do the same thing now if the $100,000 car can give you return on your investment give you value that's bringing in and you can actually afford to pay the notes go ahead well, most people can't afford to pay those notes. So guess what they do? They leave the car on the lot. Those expensive cars are not the best selling. Why? There's no demand for them at, the, at that price. The demand for them is very small. So that's when they make a very small run of those particular cars. So why there's not a lot of them around is because even though they ostensibly are worth it, and those are, one, those are the cars that are worth it, but nobody's going to pay $100,000 for a 79 Pinto. They're not. Or a 1993 Accord. It might run good. The paint job might be uh, put on it. might be appealing. But guess what? It's not worth $100,000. Somebody puts that kind of price tag on the car, going to leave it on the lot. A 2013 Honda Civic with seven owners is not worth Fifty thousand dollars. You're gonna leave it on the lot. You're gonna walk away. Even a 2019 car, you named a Mercedes that's salvaged. <laughs> it's not worth a hundred thousand dollars. It's not worth a new car price. You're gonna leave it on the lot. Leave these women in their high expectations that are not worth it. They're not worth your return on investment. Leave them on the lot. Don't buy them. Don't entertain them. Don't even kick the tires. They can sell their goods and their wares for whatever price that they want. And they can go on all these dates. I don't know why you go on a dating show demanding this. If you can find a guy that's six figures, six feet tall, and that will take you, good on you. Good on you. I'm not knocking your hustle. In fact, I'll applaud you. In fact, you need to write a book and say how you actually did it so other people of your ilk can follow in your footsteps. And I guarantee you it's not going to be that many. We we'll stop trying to shame black men into killing themselves for mediocre punani. Stop trying to activate the Winter Soldier chip. Stop trying to activate the simp chip. Stop trying to shame men into dating mediocre females and paying the ultimate price. You should go to McDonald's. We don't need to take you to no freaking Cheesecake Factory. Meet me at McDonald's, I'll buy you a strawberry shake a fries and a fish sandwich. About 15 bucks. Literally. <laughs> Literally, it's $15 if you go there and sit down there in front of the uh, playpen you know, where the little kids play and have a discussion. <laughs> have a meeting. Get to know each other. If you think you're worth a cheesecake, well, the night in Cheesecake Factory, a $200 dinner, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to decline. I'm going to leave you on the lot. Don't you want to get to know me? No, I do not. I can get to know you at the park, sitting down, sharing a, a, a Pepsi. I don't need a fancy dinner to get to know you. If I got to bait you with a $200 dinner to take you out someplace, then that, that puts me behind eight ball. I'm not paying for you. If I got to pay $200, I pay $200 up front, take your clothes off. And let's get busy. You can, you can walk away with your 200 bucks, in your pocket, I can walk away with what I need from you, and we're all squared away. It's all good. If I want you that bad, and trust and believe, man, I have never met a woman that has $200 worth of punani. 
in my whole entire life. I've never met any woman that's worth two hundred dollars to have sex with. Not once. So the cats that pay a thousand dollars, two hundred dollars, whatever it is to fly a chick out, I have never met a woman worth that much. Okay? Because even then the punani is mediocre. But I'm not knocking guys that want that experience. Hey, if she's going to do something strange for a piece of change and that's her price and you're willing to pay it at the time, go ahead and pay it. I wouldn't pay it because even the, the punani that I have had that has cost a certain amount, I get in it, man, so man, I got gypped. <laughs> that's why I leave it on the lot. I came up doing a crack here. I've had chicks that I paid $5 to have sex with and had better sex than chicks that I have dated. Yeah, I have. And I have had chicks that worked at, I paid $5. Five, they did a better job. Courting is me demonstrating my ability to provide. That's what it is. And but the thing is that you have to uh, provide evidence that you can cook, clean, take care of a house and take care of children. You can't provide that. I don't need to talk to you. You need to bring me uh, your your niece, your nephew, or your little sister, something like that, and prove to me that you can take care of kids. Otherwise, I don't need to talk to you. you Got to prove to me that you bring value to my life. Otherwise, I don't need to talk to you. Find that out on the phone. A lot of times, I take a chick out as, as a courtesy. It's a date, okay? This is a formality. I'm, I'm holding up my end of the bargain, even though I know there's nothing that's going to come of it. And I leave it there. That's how come I don't do online dating, partly because it came about when I was in my 40s. And I'm talking to a chick so she can prove to me why I should spend money on her to take her out. Now, some cats who take chicks out because they want female company. I get that. You're going out anyway. And she's accompanying you because you want female company doing your endeavors whether it's going to the casino going to dinner going to a play you don't want to go by yourself so so they they, they get the the benefit of accompanying you to your event and so you're gonna pay for it anyway i get that and a lot of guys that wind up with chicks like that they wind up being divorced anyway because the chick was not worth what they paid for 90 percent of the time i get involved most of the chicks are not worth what I paid for. Most of the chicks that I, I stayed with for years that were my significant others, I, you know, hell, my, our first date was in the park. Hell, half the time my first date encounter was at her house. My first dates with them, my first encounter with them, I didn't even spend five bucks. Sometimes they cooked. I was just I gotta spend $200 to take you out. I'm not spending no money to take you out. I don't even know you. I don't know if you're even worth the two hundred dollars I'm gonna spend on you. Unless I like going to that particular spot, and I want you to go with me. Movie and a popcorn is more than enough. We can go to Chuck E. Cheese and kick it. You know, play some games. Go to what is it, Buster? What is it? Some of the Busters. Play some of the games. Have some fun. Have some laughs. Have a chat. No need to see you dressed up. I want to know who you really are. I want to talk to you. Now, after I get to know you, I say, we can take this further. I want to invest in you. Then we can get to $200 dinner. Then you can get dressed up and wear all your makeup and stuff like that. Go on a night on the the town, go to a play, go to a concert, go to a musical and do it up. Fine. Hell, even go to Vegas and have a good time for a weekend. But you have to show value. If you're demanding that up front before I even talk to you, you know what? God bless you. Go find your buyer. God bless you. Go find your buyer. I'll, I'll be on the plane to the DR. I'll be on the plane to Columbia. Get what I want. I'd rather spend $200 on a woman that's worth it than spend $200 with a chick that thinks that she's owed something. That you owed something. I don't care how much makeup you put on. I don't care how fine you think you are. I don't care if you're an actual 10 an actual dime, a one in a thousand. The price tag is still too high because I'm not dating you for how you look. Now, guys that are in the business, in the industry, they got money to burn, money to throw around. There is this, a limelight. They got to have a dime or something close to it on their arm when they get pictures taken. It's part, it's part of the whole ambiance. 
That's what they're paying for. I'm a regular guy. I don't need that shit. And I've been taught this. I've been taught this by a lot of guys, a lot of game guys, a lot of gigolos, a lot of Macs, right? I'd rather have me hardworking four than a janky 10. Tariq Nasheed said the same thing. Better than for you to get you a solid five than a janky 10. And nowadays, most of these 10s are janky. And the 10s that aren't janky are already married. They get snapped up quick. They get snapped up in college. Leave these chicks on the goddamn lot. Stop even entertaining their uh, delusional standards. Kevin, you know, Kevin set the the, uh, the bar by doing it night after night. It wasn't even a dating show. How much must a guy earn in a certain city to give you a certain lifestyle? They started naming prices. They not stop. So now that you name your price or your price tag, now sh show me the car. Why is this car worth my investment in this car? So you're supposed to have six kids by six different men, didn't marry any of the fathers in your middle age. Why should a guy of means pay for you, buy you, pick you up, even lease you for a few years? What are you, what are you bringing to the table? You, you know, basically, are you a philosophy student? Or do you have, are you esoteric? where you have esoteric knowledge of how are you going to make his life better you can't leave these chicks on the lot man that's all I got peace out folks